do we need to talk about anything else in Super? I, mean, I think good... we probably should talk a bit more about Hull because you've written well, a long. We haven't spoken about, about either Hull. And, 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 your, have... and your favourite team, Leeds. I'm going to talk about Leeds if you want. No, no, no. Hull, Hull, I mean, I think Hull have probably been of the what first seven rounds the glaring. I mean, no one's surprised that London have well anyone with a half a brain. It's not surprised that London have won a game, but Hull. Well, they have been getting worse. The results have been getting worse for several years, but they've probably been quite worse than most would have anticipated. I think the, the one positive for them was that I thought Franklin Pele played as well as I've seen him so far. He actually ran his <laughs> way. Right. No, but he did, didn't he? he did. How many times has he been I'm suspended? In the... Oh, project. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think Jack Charles, you mentioned... Yeah, but I mean, I mean, he, clearly, he's, he's got some talent. He has, case, but yeah. Ian Watson, you know, understandably... Targeted him. Oh, he just ran all your big forwards at him, yeah. Which is exactly what they did. And I think this, the point Tony Smith was making that his disappointment was that the whole players didn't rally around and protect him a bit more. Doesn't surprise me though that, I mean, you've and got that would that would be the issue I think for for Hull that that's the bit that's missing mm. more than anything. You've got you've got Jamie Shaw calling for Tony Smith to get sacked. You've got Texoy's dad on Instagram <laughs> criticizing. I mean, it's not a united club, is it? I mean, obviously the fans are. A very very unhappy, um, and how many? I mean, uh, so some, some someone out there can tell us. But how many weeks in a row now is it that they've conceded forty or fifty points? Well, just there you go. <laughs> Three weeks out of four, they've conceded over fifty points. And the two Twice weeks before that as well. Yeah, I mean, and Huddersfield aren't St Helens or Wigan or Catalans, you know. Yeah, twenty two fifty six this week, and then thirty four ten in the derby, and fifty points yeah. six away at Huddersfield, and then the week before they, they lost at home fifty four four to Lee. I and think, they only just beat London. Mm. Yeah, so London were very unlucky to, to lose then we that look game. look at the Catalan result away, 26-12. Yeah. You know, so I think, that, I think that's what's concerning. Is it, was whole rain, fan it was raining. It was raining. They, they seem to be <laughs> getting worse. And I appreciate they've got yeah. injuries and a huge amount of injuries. Yes. And then they've had suspensions. So. Well, yeah. that's, that's a bit I was, I mean, was going to say. You know, are the, they are clearly, by the number of cars that they've got, the most indisciplined team in the competition. Does that come out of frustration with their performances or as a as a sort of like a referee do you look at them and go we need to we need to look at Hull because they're they're a club that clearly um I don't know I mean I'd have to look at each individual card and work out whether I think well the power player generally aren't they mm. and a, a number of those came in the first game I was going to say you I was I was about to say that Phil yeah. you can't really blame that in the first game so, 20 minutes in or whatever it was yeah, yeah. I, I, is that technique is it the, the player that you've signed and ill his, discipline his record uh, yeah. You know, there's probably a whole number of uh, factors in that. Um, so, but clearly, it's an it's an it's an issue that they've got that they'll be looking at, won't they? Yeah. Uh, and if players buy into what's going on, then you might think, think that they respond to that. But it's hard to change your ways if you're uh, a I player think, of a certain. I, so that's the thing with style. Lee, Lee Sal getting simmed in twice in the same game. I think that clearly what, shows what they're not they buying into it, are they? Yeah. What they're are not, they, they're are not, they capable of learning? It, uh, the other great thing about this game, sorry James, is yeah. you've got the immediate thing you can say, Jake Connor, Adam Swift, there you go. Both at Hull in recent years, score of the points. So. Well, I think the Jake the Jake Connor one's interesting because and the piece that I wrote, which is free online, anyone can read it, and it references uh, a book that you may have published uh, by a, a very... Um, well, it's an amazing player, wasn't it's, he? It's Gareth Ellis. Yes. Like yes. I don't, need, I don't need to speak in code. Um <laughs> Anyone should go and buy his book because I think it's a fascinating read. But he made some really interesting insights about Hull FC. He obviously spent a long time there. He was part of success there. He's no longer there, but makes some interesting insights about the culture, about the owner, about promises that were made. And I think this all ties into how the club is run, how the recruitment's been made. And I think you look at Tony Smith. He, he said this last year. He wanted to change the culture. He's tried to change the squad but then you look at, they're obviously not spending the full salary well, cap. That, you They've got a stadium. stadium you referenced that, that thing that Sky did about what clubs were, hmm. were spending. Oh, I heard the, that I the, heard that weeks ago. That the they dislocation, were spending though, the is that at the start of the season in the local newspaper, Adam Pearson was saying, we've recruited really well and we're, we're spending all the money that, you know, we, we think I mean, we would. Clubs you, would and, never, and never get, lie, would they? get the figures and, yeah. and it's clearly not that and the performances would indicate it isn't that so again you've got to take your fans with you with a degree well, of honesty measure, as well. yeah you've got to measure people's expectations yes, just, you just because you don't spend them. to the cap doesn't necessarily mean as we've seen in previous Salford. years absolutely so yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean no. that 
But, but don't promise like what you can't deliver. Yeah, I agree. That's probably where some of the frustration is coming from if you're all Well, I think the other issue as well um, is the local juniors. Mm. Um, when was the last great player that came from Hull? Not even great, just good. You know, Danny Houghton. You could make a case well, for him. Well, I'll, I'll use two examples who came from Hull FC, who they let go. Jez Litton, England international. Jordan Abdul, England international. They but, let them go. But, it, but even Hull KR are not rely as successful as they are at the moment, they are not relying on local talent. Well, they're helping themselves to Hull FC. And the talent, core of local they? talent that Hull have had are no longer young. They keep yeah. being referred yeah. to as young, yeah. and they're not. They've been yeah. there long enough to establish themselves as Super mm. League players. They all look size wise mm. the same. But where, you know. But even, even that. Where's even, the next Mike even Lewis? That's, even that structure. Um, it not, might be Jack Charles, but. Yeah. Even that structure's not been settled, has it? Because they had their own academies, then they yeah. came together. Then they've gone the separate ways yeah. again. So Michael Shenton seen, was there for five minutes. He's yeah. left. So there's that, been there's a lot been of changes. There's been change there. So there's yeah. no stability. And, and you know, if you're looking at a, a Wigan as a, as a comparison, which you inevitably would do yeah. as a champions, that you've got a head coach there who's come through that pathway mm. himself in terms of a coach. So you've got that continuity. Well, you look as is Paul you Wellens look, as a player and an assistant yeah. coach. But you look at June in December and what he did for Wigan this weekend, uh, this week at Lee. Um, and you look how his progression into what is a winning team and a winning culture has made him already a standout. Harvey Hill, I think, is a fantastic young prospect. We haven't even seen Ethan Havard this mm. year. Sam Walters hasn't made his debut yet. Admittedly, he didn't come through the Wigan system, but they've identified the fact that that's how they want to bring their young players in. Hull are having to throw some young players in who are getting woefully exposed, who I don't think it's any fault of theirs, or even Tony's, because mm. I think he realised what it takes. You yeah, need to definitely. bring them into a... So, you know, like Logan Moy, everybody said, oh, it's great. And, like, the kid's 17. Don't expect too much yeah. of him at the moment. This is a project for Hull that's probably going to take them three three years at least. And, the, I mean, at Hull, what, but Tony's I just now in his second season? The core of players that they're building their team around aren't good enough. But it's not just it's not just that, Phil. It's not just the homegrown dudes. It's the overseas recruitment as well. But I think overseas, I mean, you can only fish in the market that you can afford to fish in. Well, yes and no, because you look at, and I'll use Salford as an example, they've got less money than Hull, but they have a fantastic track record and overseas, you know, Jackson Hastings, Lussick. Didn't stay, didn't stay. Well, you can't you don't, build, but you you don't, can't build you don't, around Well, I don't think, well, I disagree because they got to a grand final and yeah. then two years later they were, a, what, one win from a grand final with a different team. And they got to they've a been been Tim Lafay, another, I mean, he was on a building site. No one yeah. wanted him and he's been fantastic. I mean, he, Basically killed England in the the semi final of the World Cup. You know he's been a great son. Salford have a great track record of that. I think it just shows that they're not doing the research either on the players that they've been offered or they're just making poor decisions. Which and is that comes very on Tony Smith like. I don't think Tony Smith. Well, some of those decisions have been made before he was there. Mm. I think you tie that back to when Motu Tony left, who yep. was in charge of that yep. in 2017, and since then they've gone one way and it's downhill. I mean, on a salary cap perspective as well, uh, you know, recruiting local juniors is going to be cheaper than absolutely. It is. Big players. It is. But what yeah. if they're not you know, being a, produced? The, the question that's not. But how being can you not in a hotbed of, a hotbed uh, of rugby? I don't league. think but it's as much of a hotbed in terms the, of participation. That's the issue, isn't it? Yeah. That is the issue. If the kids were there, they'd be in the systems, but they're not because they're not there. Or, and but it, does that give Leeds an advantage for an example? Uh, Example, or we're going to say it's where you've got. I oh, does. Yeah. You've got just 100%. the small town of Wigan, but you've got you've got other hundred percent. You basically got the whole of Lancashire and even into Yorkshire. But, they're taking but Wigan, from yeah, Yorkshire, Morgan Smithies traveling from Halifax. Yeah. They're, they're, but that's yeah. dead to your network. That's your scouting. Yeah. So you go all well, the. There's this great kid who's lives three hours away, but we'll get him in at fifteen, and we'll yeah. turn him into. Yeah. And so they've done that with more. And then so they sign a camera and make some money. Wouldn't just be whole, <laughs> would it? it? Would include York. It would include yeah. you know, West Yorkshire as well. I mean, it's but like, I, I think the question that isn't really being addressed is what's the quality and number of kids playing in an area that we always refer to as a hotbed mm. which it clearly is but I think we've where seen is that. the next we've seen those clubs two or three great young players that mm. we're already hearing about I think we've seen those clubs those junior clubs die off haven't we those amateur well, clubs certain age, certain age groups yeah. within them have yeah. yes and that's something that the game should be looking at and that's not Hull's fault necessarily I think it might be a wider issue yeah, for no, the it sport is. as a whole but I think the other issue which which they're also facing is the stadium 
you know, I think that what I was told, the tenancy agreement runs out, I think, in 20, 27 or 28, yeah. and they don't make a lot of money because no. they are tenants. Which was negotiated by? Adam Pearson. Oh, right. Okay. And my information is that I think Adam Pearson would like to sell the club and move on, but who's going to take it? Who's going to buy it? I mean, they're not a particularly profitable club. They have a large fan base, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, not, you, not if you're selling season tickets for next year now, you're not investable. you're not getting uh, oh, not investable. investable. Um, <laughs> How dare you say that? How so dare you? Hull, obviously half their catchment area is fish and they don't play rugby league. But <laughs> York have started moving <laughs> towards Selby and going up towards Scarborough and whatever. I'm not saying they're going to pull anyone out there straight away, but obviously Gareth Ellis from. from but Selby. this whole argument is around time. Mm. Time and resource, but mainly time. So when we have one result that doesn't go your way or a couple of results, we're already throwing the coach but, out. And, yeah. You know, that's nobody, not the answer, is it, for me? No, that's no, not the answer for me. But nobody has perspective. Yeah. Well, that's... You, you have to stay true to... You, a, you've got to have a plan, and I'm not sure Hull do. That's part of their problem. And then you've got to stick to that plan because you're going to hit some bumpy days. You've also got to have the right people got, in the right position to power. It comes back to the right people. Exactly. exactly. The yeah. right people in the right jobs so you know your, your pathway is so important mm. you know recruitment into your first team Cass to top up Cass on that and, you know, to so do that. Part, so. I mean two years ago Cass revamped their whole junior development program because although there were a, a lot of kids playing at, at places like uh, Cassford Academy they weren't necessarily breaking through into the, the first team or they were being picked up in well, they were going to lose their license weren't they for yeah the so they've revamped everything and now that you look at the results which is an indication of the academy the reserves and the, the college team that they recently founded, mm -hmm. and they're starting now on a track where mm -hmm. that's going to prove fertile. But as Craig Lingard has said, that isn't going to happen this season. Mm -hmm. It may not happen next yeah. season. I, th I think what you were saying too about... But about, I'm not sure Hull, Hull of... Yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to change the subject, but I think what you were saying too about the reaction of Sack the Coach, people... I've had two people uh, online say this. Uh, if if St Helens lose this weekend, yeah. Paul Wellens could be under pressure. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, what? And obviously yeah. there's the Rowan Smith thing, and I understand Leeds fans, they've been through a lot since 2017 and our passion, but you're not just sacking coaches. They're not just 100 who's, ready I'm coaches. Who's who, who, so um, I've sacked Tony Smith and Rowan Smith. I own Leeds. And, and, Paul, and Paul Wellens. And Paul Wellens. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. my mate can't be happy about that. So <laughs> who, who, who's, who's, who's out there? But I'm down, pal. You buy him out of his contract. You have two V? I don't know. No, I mean, I just, I think, I think people, but think not, some you, fans seem to have a divine right that their team has to win every game, and if they you, don't, you're not going to get the kind of stability that no, is going to bring you no. longer term success if no. you're always looking at one result on any weekend. And Hull have had what I think six, five or six coaches in the last yeah. four years. And the other thing, from a player's perspective, having never been one, is that if you, <laughs> if you keep losing the coach, yeah, it keep reinforces the yeah. impression that oh well. Does it really matter because they'll just change the guy at the top? Mm. And I've still got a contract. I'll be right. I don't have yeah. to be accountable. If it's back on the players, yeah. then hang on a minute. You've got a bit of Which responsibility here. Which is why whole need to stick with Tony Smith, in my opinion, and go through whatever, however rough this well, time the is. The decline was well before he got yeah. there. That's, and if that's he can thing. see some ways of changing that, and there is going to be pain in doing that, he he is about as good as you can get. Mm. The, the flip side is, though, have the players, because the results, if you look at them, they're getting worse. Have the players completely switched off from him now? I don't know that. I'm just asking a question. 